In this video, I'm going to show you how to do some really cool things with core with your vector art. I was creating a font anyway, so I thought I'd take the opportunity to show you how to use core's vector digitizing functions to simplify your digitizing. So I'm going to create this W, and this particular font is Calibri, and uh, it has rounded ends. And most of these fonts that have rounded ends are kind of a pain in the butt. And I think anybody who's ever digitized letters know that you have to create like a short line and then a longer line to build these curves. And you think, well, there's got to be a better way to do this. With core, we can select the uh, vector. Now, this works with any vector. It's not just lettering or whatever, okay? This just happens to be what I was doing. So we're going to select the vector, and then we're going to use the effects to convert it to, in this case, satin. What Core does is just generates a basic outline that is asking you now to input your stitch angles. How do you want to route these stitches? Well, I want to route the stitches in a certain way because this is the way I do keyboard letting. I want all of these stitches in this W to run left to right. So these are my angles. Now when I build the stitches it's not going to look pretty because this is not really a routable path. What I can do next is use my slice tool and divide this up into branches. So picking slice tool, split it here and I want to split here, and I'm going to split here. And when I build the stitches now, viola. The only thing left to do is to add some overlap into each segment. So I'm going to break this block apart into each leg, and then I'm going to use the shape tool, and I'm going to zoom in here so you can see better, to increase my overlap between the branch segments. And this way I won't get a gap when it sews. Now, I don't really need to um, overlap both sides like this, but since this is going to be a keyboard font, I don't know if the user is going to choose to sew left to right, right to left, or whatever. So in that case, I want it to have overlap in both directions so that we never get a gap. Once I get my overlaps done, I'm going to reselect all four and then just recombine. And now when I save it, you'll see that this gets added to the font.